Welcome back to the DCL community where we are here to help you plan, prepare for, and get excited for those Disney cruises. You guys know me. I'm Rebecca, your host and admin of the DCL community. And today we are doing a deep dive, a step-by-step -step of how to check in for your Disney cruise. I know that there is a lot of anxiety and anticipation because you don't know until you get in. So Laura and I are stripping back all the mystery and showing you exactly how to prepare. So as you're coming in, please say hello. Let us know where you're watching from. And as people are doing that, Laura, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Laura with Fairytale Journeys Travel, and I am here to get you less stressed about this whole check-in process and show you how easy and stress-free it actually is. So let's get let's get this going. Yeah, I was going to say, we're going to go ahead and share screenshots of everything you need to know. Um, this is going to be recorded and up on the DCL community YouTube, so you can always refer back to it. If you have any questions as we're going through, put those in the comments. We're going to do our best to get to them. Um, but know that if you are stressed about any part of your Disney cruise, you can always reach out to Laura. Her planning services are totally free for you to use, and we would love for you to book your next Disney cruise with her. So let's go ahead and dive in. Oh, people okay. watching from Australia, Virgin Hello, Islands. Oh, Australia. Hello. I know Virgin this Islands. is exciting. Oh, well, you guys let us know if you have any questions as we're going through. So first, we're going to start with just an overview of actually when you can check in. And this is based on your, your Castaway Club tier, right? Correct. So you, this is all based on that. And you are a silver castaway member the minute you complete your first sailing you are automatically a silver member so you get to check in 33 days prior to your sailing and then um, for gold gold you have completed five sailings so your sixth sailing you are gold and that is check in 35 days prior to sailing Awesome. And that platinum? Platinum is after completing 10 sailings. So that means on your 11th sailing, you're considered platinum and you check in 38 days before your sailing. Love it. And Pearl, what you are? What I am is after completing 25 sailings and you get to check in 40 days prior to sailing. Love it. And, and what if I am a first time cruiser? I've never been with Disney before. This is your first cruise. That means you check in 30 days prior to your sailing. And if you're concierge, it's 40 days prior, but you, there's no rush to do it. Got it. Okay. Good to know. Lots of perks with concierge. Yes. I haven't done it before, but you make it look mighty enticing. If you guys aren't following Laura on social media, you have to because <laughs> she posts the best pictures when she's on board. Uh, so it's always let's, fun. let's go ahead and clarify something about when you actually check in because everybody's got the count. You, if you don't already have oh. the Navigator app downloaded, make sure you download that and you'll see the really fun character countdown, but people yes. freak out when they see 30 days. Can you share what that discrepancy is and what you actually need to see? Yes. So if you're following that countdown, this happens a lot. I'll get a late night message from my client panicking. There's no link to check in. It's after midnight. And it's because they looked at their app and their app says 30 days, X amount of hours and X amount of minutes. Well, it's the X amount of hours and the X amount of minutes that actually make your check in the next day. So you need to wait until your app says 29 days, eight hours and 30 seconds. So don't jump on check-in when your app says 30 days. Jump on it when it says 29 20, yes. or 39 for Pearl or 30 or 34. Whatever your check-in date is, wait till the app says you're a day late, but you're not. Yes, yes. Once that hits 29 up top, that's your cue to that's go. That's your check-in. And yeah. it is at midnight. So And midnight Eastern. Eastern US. Standard Time, because remember, everything's based in Florida, the East Coast. So no matter where you are, Australia, the Virgin Islands, it's based on Eastern Standard or Eastern Daylight Time. So that's when it opens. So sorry if that's a crazy hour for 
it's a crazy hour for us at midnight. So it might be a good hour for you yeah, in Australia. I was going to ask, there is a lot of anxiety about, I have to wake up at midnight to do this, but you really don't have to do that, right? No, it's the people who really decided in their head they have to be the first port arrival time. And we'll show you that screen when we get <laughs> there. Um, but, you know, you're going to get on the ship and you don't have to be the first port arrival to do it. So yeah. you don't have to be up at midnight. Or if the system's glitching because there's a lot of people checking in, you can go back to sleep and wake up the next morning and you're still going to get a port arrival time. Yes. It yeah. might not be 11, it might be 12 or 1, but it doesn't matter. The ship doesn't board till about noon. So, so don't stress okay. about that. Don't stress. Really. It's not about stressing. Get excited. Right. And the only other thing that you might do at that 30 day mark is, is that the Royal Gathering when that happens? Yeah. So it, it makes it kind of a little more stressful for a new sailor because they're not only having their check-in day, but that's the day that royal gathering which is the big princess gathering that happens in the grand hall or atrium of our ships um that's when booking opens for that so a lot of times i tell my client if they really want the royal gathering that's what we're going to go for at midnight and mm -hmm. do check-in later yes yes you got to prioritize and it's same with those if you do like a pixar day at sea where you have the Woody's breakfast or the exactly you know, meet the Incredibles, you just have to prioritize what's more important to you and then do it in that order. Um, but mm -hmm. again, do not stress about any of that. We're going to walk through, um, walk through the check-in process. Cause it's very simple. And Disney does it in such a way that they take you step by step and you can't really move on to the next step until you complete the first step. And the instructions are very clear. So at midnight, the button there that you see yes. um, will open. It doesn't have it right now. It just says view required citizenship documents right now for you if you log in and it's not your check-in date. But at midnight, that check-in button appears magically. Yes. So you're going to go ahead and click that. And you get this beautiful screen and you hit the begin check-in button. And you can see the modules there on the um, left-hand side of the screen and what you're gonna have to fill out first. And they always have a continue button at the bottom right. So, and this clearly says, even though the names are blocked out, it says that this has not been started. So you would hit continue. Okay. And, and this is what it looks like if you have kids in your party, the last one yeah. was adult only. Right. So if you have kids in your party, they have an option for you to, add, you know, pre-register your children uh, for the kids clubs and not the teen club. So what do you need for guest information? This is the only thing that can slow you down because you do need all of this information. Um, mm -hmm. You need your address, your email, your phone number, your preferred language and an emergency contact. If you enter that, you can click it's the same for each guest. So you won't have to copy that into the next guest's profile. You do need a picture of your passport, Nexus card, or birth certificate. And if you have a birth certificate, you also need a copy of your driver's license. And you need a security photo of yourself. So that is a photo much like your passport or driver's license, shoulders up on a blank background with nothing on your head, no hats. Um, you have to upload this. They're going to ask you if anybody's going to be pregnant 24 plus weeks. And they're going to ask you if you need a wheelchair motor coach transfer. Yes. And I know that this is a lot of information. And sometimes people will ask, oh, well, if I have a travel agent, will my travel agent do this for me? But as you can see, this is a lot of personal information, like your emergency contact, your passport, maybe, maybe even your birth certificate. So this is something that I know I would rather keep those documents rather than emailing them out. And honestly, we're not supposed to do this for you because what yeah. you'll see at the end is where you have to accept and sign the cruise contract. We can't sign that for you. And if I do that, I can't even do that for you. Yeah. So 
you have to be logged into your account and you have to do this. So unfortunately, this is something your travel agent wouldn't feel comfortable doing it for you. I don't feel comfortable doing it. Yeah. Um, so because this is very personal. Yes, it is. And, you know, make sure when you're uploading the pictures, everything is clear. We just got um, a bounce back that one of our passports it was a little cut off in one of the corners. So Disney declined it and we had to re-upload the picture. If you get something like that, it is normal. Don't worry. But just make sure those pictures are clear. Correct. So after you enter all that information, this is where you tell them what document you're going to upload. So there's in this drop down box, you have the option for birth certificate or passport or Nexus card. Yeah. Um, and then uh, do we have a picture of the um, yeah, this one? Nope. All right. I thought I I thought I sent over a picture of the actual screen for the passport. I can see if I can upload. pull that guy up. It's OK. Oh. It's OK. So these are the do's and don'ts for your pictures, by the way. And these are important. I did mention how you should take your um, security photo. Um, it has to be a color photo. No filters, ladies. Yes. <laughs> I, you know, I know people love the filters. No filter. Um, <laughs> shoulders up, looking forward, face clearly visual and visible, and only one person in the picture. So don't line the whole family up and try to upload one picture. Um, and those are the don'ts. Yes, and I have got this guy here. Yes, Can you see there that it one? is. Awesome. Okay, so this is a little. There we so go. There we go. So this is where you would upload your passport. And what's so funny is that this system will enter the rest of the, it will recognize what's in the picture. So this ID, date of birth, it all comes from that picture of the passport. So you'll know it was a good picture if you see everything autofill in there for you. Um, so that yeah. all fills in and then you can upload your security picture and then you'll be able to hit continue. And you do this for each guest. Yes. And so let's say that I sent my passport in to try and, you know, get it renewed, but it hasn't come back yet. And I have to check in with my birth certificate. Does that mean that I, I'm stuck with my birth certificate? Can I change it? And what do I need to bring to the port? Okay. If you want to change the uploaded document so that you could use a passport when you get to the port, you have to do that three days before you're sailing. You can come back into the check-in and modify it and upload a different document. But when you get to port, everything has to match because they're going to have this on their little pads when you get to port to check in there. And they're going to make sure everything that you gave them is the same. Yeah. Um, that's going to hold you up and it might prevent you from sailing because this has been approved. So um, just make sure that whatever you upload into the system you have with you at port. Uh, and yes, you can leave your glasses on for the picture, um, just not sunglasses covering your eyes. In Australia, we can use our driver's license. Which option do we select? You would use your birth certificate option and you'd have to I don't know what the citizenship it, you here. We have to prove our citizenship, Australia. If a license is all you need, then just upload the license. Um, but I believe you still have to upload a, a birth certificate. Yeah, I was going to say getting um, getting with your travel agent and double checking what the requirements are just because they change from country to country. And even the, the citizenship documents can be different. And that's another reason that we always recommend the passport book. The passport book, it is a little bit more, but you get that additional benefit of the international air versus the card, which only I believe allows you to go um, by car in North America. Correct. So, um, definitely recommend the book. I know, like I said, I know it's a, an additional expense, but it is worth it just for that peace of mind, especially when you are traveling outside of the country. 
just in case anything happens. Yeah, please don't don't chance it because you don't want to. Yes. If there was an emergency, you had to get off the ship for whatever reason in another country and you don't have a passport, you're going to end up at the embassy until they can get you a passport. So yes. it's really important that you have one. Yes, yes. One last thing to stress about. Um, okay, so you okay. finished your guest so information. We did guest information. Now we have to move to onboard account. And what that is, is they want to know how you're going to pay for everything you purchase on board and charge back to your room because DCL is a cashless trip, a ship. So everything you purchase, souvenirs, drinks, um, your port adventures that yes. you booked your tastings that you pre-booked all of these things are going to be on your onboard portfolio and disney wants to know how you're going to pay them at the end of the cruise so this is where you're adding a credit card number um or you could tell them it's a cash account they'll give you a spending limit and you have to go pay that every time you reach it they cut off your charging privileges until you do yeah. um so this is where you get to put this information in um there is the option that charges would be paid by another guest and that guest is going to check you off on their reservation. So if you're traveling with grandparents who are paying for your vacation, they will check the box with who they're paying for. Um, they won't let you get past this box until you tell them how you're paying. Um, and then there, so you don't have to do this for each individual. You could say my whole party, I'm covering my whole party as well. Uh, and I'm glad you mentioned, you know, you once you book your excursions or your taste stains, I know Disney's a little bit different than some other cruise lines, but just because I book it, you know, 30 days out or whenever my activity booking window opens, you don't pay for it then, right? right. You don't yeah, pay for it so, until you're on board. Right. Royal Caribbean, Norwegian Cruise Line, Virgin Voyages, all of them, when you book onboard activities or you book port adventures, you're paying for them when you book them. With Disney Cruise Line, you're reserving your spot and these charges get charged to your onboard folio. So you're not paying for them until you board and you have time to cancel before you get charged. Um, it's a 24 hour cancellation policy um, and they do stick to it. Yes, yes, and be respectful too. Cause they, you know, a, a lot of people don't realize that people are canceling things all the time. We had an excursion and we were doing Eastern Caribbean and the baths is a very popular one. And people were canceling all the way up until a couple of days before spots were opening up. So if you don't see or if something's sold out and you don't see any slots, keep checking back. Do not stress. Things yes, happen. People things cancel. change. People yes. are like, you know what? I'm gonna, I decided I don't want to do this. I want to spend my money here. Um, if you're paying for it with a gift card, choose the cash option. And then you could put the gift cards on your account when you get on board. You could even put the gift cards on the account before you go. Um, as an onboard credit, call your travel agent or go into the onboard stateroom gifts and add mm -hmm. onboard credit. You could do that before you even go. Yes, yes. And I can share a video on how to do that on the Disney Cruise Line community Instagram page just so Perfect. everybody knows how, how to do that one. Okay, so onboard account is complete. Let's move on to travel plans. So travel plans. Disney wants to know how you're getting to the ship. Um, and how you're leaving the ship. And you have to give them this information um, in order to continue. Um, so if you're flying in, you have to tell them this information. They're gonna ask you for flight numbers, for flight arrival times, both ways. If you're driving, they're gonna ask you where you're going at the end of the cruise. So if you're a Florida resident and you're going home, they're gonna ask you for your address. It's just to make sure everybody has a place to go. It's a Disney security thing. Yeah. Um, so this is, you fill this out. And again, you only have to input the information once if you're a family of four and copy, you know, you just say, this is good for my whole party. So it's only once, but you need to have your flight information ready to go at check-in. Yes, yes. And um, it's easy enough to have the flight information pulled up. Um, I know I would always recommend doing this on your computer and not trying to do it on a mobile phone or a tablet. It's just easier to have all your information pulled up um, on a big Agreed. screen, um, especially. Agreed. 
Laura and I were chatting before. My eyesight is not what it used to be. So trying to do that on a phone <laughs> or a tablet, just I, I don't do this on days. my phone. I do I do my check in. I do anything that is big and important on my computer. Yeah, I don't want to mess up anything and have it kicked back. Yeah. Agreed. And what about children? Okay, so if you are traveling with children and you have you are pre-registering them, when you click that tab, the system is smart enough to know what children you have that are age appropriate for the Oceaneer Club and Oceaneer Lab, and you just check them off, hit the check boxes. But this form is really important. It's the child debarkation permission form. Um, if you're traveling with people. You need to give Disney permission who could pick up your children, who can take your children off the ship. Um, this is a form that they're going to ask you to fill out um, online. So they have a copy of it. And they'll also ask you to sign a copy on board when you get to the club. And it's for your kids' safety, obviously. And I would always recommend registering your kids ahead of time. When we were on board a couple of weeks ago, the line for people at the kids club was so long to get people registered. So just save yourself that time and hassle and just do it. Do it during the check-in process. Um, yes. And I was going to say, you want to uh, knock out those um, questions? Yep. All the Ooh. options can be modified after as long as it's three days before. Um if it's not, you can always change those options once you get on the ship by going to guest services and add a credit card. And yeah. for the travel plans, as long as Disney has something in there, um, unless you're taking Disney transportation, um, they're going to track your flights. If you need to cancel that, you're going to have to call in and deal with them. Um but as long as you're getting to the ship, everything is going to be fine. If you're flying in several days beforehand, staying at Walt Disney World Resort and taking DCL transportation, what do you indicate as your travel plan? So you're still flying in. It's going to ask you for the date of your flight. Mm -hmm. And it's going to ask you how you're getting to the port. And it should there should be an option for Disney transportation. Yes. So you're going to check that. And if you have a wonderful travel agent, they will already have that on there for you. So you won't even have to click Disney transfer. It'll automatically. Exactly. It automatically. No. Yes. Yes. Um, great questions. You guys keep them coming. Oh, and there it is. Perfect. There it is. Perfect timing. <laughs> so when you are leaving, so it's going to ask how you're leaving the terminal. Um, so there are your options. And there's the question with which guests share the same travel plans and you can select all. And that question is at the bottom of every one of those modules, which guests yes. share this information. So that's where you're going to just hit select all. Um, so yeah, however you're leaving the port, they just want to know. Yes. And um, if you park your car at the terminal, is the parking deck close by or do you have to? Right across the street. Oh, easy peasy. And do you know how much is parking at the port, at least at this point? Well, at, at, it's $79 for a three-night cruise at Port Canaveral. I am not sure about the new pricing at Fort Lauderdale. I will find out and drop it in the comments. Um, it's a We don't worry about New York anymore, um, <laughs> sadly enough. And San Diego, I want to say, is... What is it? I think I want to say it's thirty dollars a day. Okay, San good Diego. to know. Awesome. Yeah, and this is again. What there's so many pieces to the puzzle of you know you book your cruise and that's great, but all the other things around it and once you're on board that involve planning. This is another reason that having a travel advisor is so great. And um, what about Disney transfers? How much are those right now? Or right at least now going into twenty four. Twenty twenty four. They're ninety dollars a person round trip. So whether you're coming in from the resort or the airport, so anything round trip, it's $90 a person. Um, it's a little less in Fort Lauderdale because the airport's not as far and there's no tolls. Remember at Port Canaveral, you're about an hour away if you're in Orlando um, and Walt Disney World from the port and it's a toll road. So you're, that's why it's not as, inexpensive as it is in Fort Lauderdale. 
Yes. And if you're sitting there wondering, okay, I, I get how to check in, but how, once I get to the port, how do I get on board? And you have questions about getting on or off the ship. Laura and I have done live events just like this, all about getting on the ship and getting off the ship. So those are on the DCL community YouTube page. So go back and watch those through. We talk about every aspect of getting on and off the ship. So if you have any questions, check those out. Oh, the port arrival time, the okay. coveted port arrival time. This is something everybody panics about. Um, I got to get a port arrival time. And here I can tell you that the earliest port arrival times are already taken. <laughs> uh, and yeah. it doesn't matter because you're still going to arrive at, you could choose a port, any of these port arrival times you could choose. Um, and this screen isn't going to open until those three boxes are complete. Yeah, um, you can't jump ahead. You can't jump ahead. And a lot of people are like, I'm just going to go on and grab my port arrival time. It doesn't work that way. Um, so here you just choose what time you are going to arrive or would like to arrive at port. Um, everybody goes for these early port arrival times. But remember, if you arrive at 1130, you're still going to have to wait to board in the terminal. If you arrive at one, you're probably going to walk on the ship as soon as you get up the escalator because they're in the boarding process. So I get the rush to get to the port super early. Um, but then you're sitting there in the port waiting. Yes. And I, and, and I get the excitement. I really do. I get the excitement. Yes. I'm like all about it. But when push comes to shove, especially when you're with little kids, it's nicer to kind of arrive and have your boarding group number called. Yes. Yeah. And um, don't, don't stress about this guys. And I'm curious, Laura, is there anybody who doesn't need a port arrival time? There is only one group of people that doesn't, that doesn't need a port arrival time. Actually two groups. I lie. <laughs> port arrival times are no longer needed for Pearl castaway members and concierge guests have oh, never needed a port arrival time um if you are a platinum member who remembers pre-covid where you could just arrive at the port that's gone for platinum members now no. you do need to choose a port arrival time pearl guests don't need a port arrival time they're automatically group two boarding group two and concierge is automatically on the ship first they board first yeah um so, yeah, I was boarding, say, go ahead. Uh, when do you know your boarding time? So, when we get to the end of this, your port arrival form will have your boarding group number. Mm -hmm. So, you have your port arrival time, the time you can pull up to port and check in, and your boarding group. And they are usually pretty close. It's not a time you're given, it's a group number you're given, and they board the ship by group number. Thank um, you for making that that distinction, because I think a lot of people think that your port arrival time is when you're supposed to get on the ship. Mm -hmm. And that's that they're two different things. No, it's actually exactly what it is. It's a port arrival time. So I get a chuckle when, you know, somebody puts a question. I have a port arrival time at 12. What time can I arrive at the, the port? Yeah. 12. Yeah. Um, my port arrival time is 1230. That means you arrive at the port at 1230. If you show up early, they're not letting you in the port. You're going to be lined up and mm -hmm. waiting until they call the 1230 port arrival people. So don't go early and be patient when you get there. Um, those are um, Yes. Always pack your patience and your kindness. Uh, and then these questions about the DCL shuttle or the Disney transfer. So you, oh. yeah, I was going to say, do you want to jump in there? So you're still going to have to go through the check-in process and they're still going to make you pick a port arrival time, yeah. but you are arriving by Disney transfer. So they're going to let you in the port when the bus arrives. So don't worry about the port arrival time you're given. The Disney yeah. transfer kind of overrides it. So you're okay. Um, the sometimes they will override your boarding group that you're assigned and mm -hmm. let you board early. It's not always a guarantee. It depends on how crowded the port is, yeah. but um, you don't have to worry about your port arrival time when you're on DCL transfer. You yes. 
but you're going to have say, to, the system still makes you choose one. So just pick yes. one. Doesn't just pick matter. one. Don't be stressed about it. Just select one. And at the end, you'll see your boarding group. And, you know, a lot of times you'll see people freaking out that I got boarding group 10 or I got boarding group 18. Don't worry about that. They move through so fast. We boarding group, we, I was boarding group eight and was on the ship by 1215. Like, that's what I'm that's what I'm saying. There's no need to stress about it. We did we always do Disney transfers. We love them. Um, it just makes it so seamless and we love, you know, that they have the entertainment, the cartoons or the movies or the trivia on board for I was gonna say for the kids, but mm -hmm. you know, for the big kids too. For the big kids. And, us. Yeah. And you know, we ended up getting to the port much later than we would have liked to. It was closer to one o'clock. And by that point, they were already well past boarding group 20. I mean, they were flying through. So don't stress about your boarding group number. They are a well-oiled machine and they're not going to make people sit and wait until your port arrival time if an entire boarding group has already gone. And Laura, you've made this part. The boarding groups aren't like thousands of people. They're small. No, I mean, and that's the point. I mean, think about the, how many people they have to embark on the ship so yeah. they do it in a way to keep the port empty thus following port arrival times yes. and then within those port arrival times or boarding groups and they're clear in the port as other port arrivals are happening and that's the flow so mm -hmm. they're not like thousands of people in boarding groups so sometimes yes. they'll like look around the port and they'll say now boarding groups five through eight because they don't have a lot of people waiting. So it, it's honestly nothing you have to stress about. It Just yeah. enjoy, get excited. It, yeah. These oh, are the little I, things. I love that you said that. It's so true. Do not stress about this process. I can't tell you. I remember, and Laura, I know you do too, when you used to go up the escalator at Port Canaveral and it would just oh. be a sea of people. And now with this new boarding process, and the port's basically empty by the time you get up there because they're moving people so fast. And it, I, I really hated that too because they still assigned you boarding groups. Yeah, you know, on you the piece of paper. In, on the piece yep. of paper. And it still, you still had like, they still had port arrival times. They just let you in, right? Yeah. They weren't strict about it because it was pre-COVID, no one cared. So you'd have people who weren't supposed to arrive until two showing up at 10 and they'd all be in the terminal. Yes. And you'd be like, what is happening? Because it wasn't like you'd get an earlier boarding group number. You were right. determined. So I am so relieved that they do it this way now and they don't even let you in the port because you could breathe and people could take pictures with the characters and you could find a seat. Yes, the ship. Oh, there's nothing like it. Uh, and then and yes, you can still get Disney transportation if you're not staying at a Disney resort. It has to be added to your reservation and um, it's just airport to port, port to airport. Yes, yes. It's super easy. That's what we do every time we have a hotel we like to stay at that has a complimentary shuttle to and from the airport. And it makes it so easy. Um, you drop your bags off, you get checked in, and it is smooth sailing from there. Oh, I'm easy, so excited easy, for my lemon next cruise. Squeeze. Yeah. Uh, okay, the cruise contract. Let's talk about this one. Yeah, the thing nobody reads, and yeah. then they have tantrums and fit when things go wrong, um, mm -hmm. like the weather and itinerary changes or a ship leaves late. Um, it's all in this cruise contract. So <laughs> you are agreeing to Disney's terms. You are, they're telling you what you're responsible for, um, what they're responsible for. They can't control weather. So for instance, this past weekend, the weather was horrible. There was a huge storm. It wasn't a hurricane, but it was like a hurricane. So there was an itinerary change for one ship out of Fort Lauderdale. It didn't go to the Bahamas. It ended up going to the Western Caribbean, and I had some clients not happy. You don't get money back for that. It's a weather thing. Um, the Disney Fantasy got stuck in port overnight, couldn't even leave Port Canaveral until Sunday. Um, services are still happening on the ship. The activities, the food, 
they were just stuck in port. And this is on the cruise contract. It's weather. They can't control weather. Yeah. Um, cancellations, they will refund you. If they have to bring you home early and end your cruise, they will refund the difference and probably offer you something nice. But other than that, everything is here in the cruise contract. So if you have questions about this stuff, read it and then agree to it. Um, yes. Yes. Don't um, just that's my school. best advice. Yes. Disney, as much as we would love for them to be able to control the weather, that is one thing that they still still don't have control over quite yet. So again, be kind to especially the people on board, the crew, they're working so hard and you know they can't control the weather of the situation either. So when you're agreeing to this, know that ahead of time that Disney can only control so much, but what they can control will be wonderful. Exactly. And you know, yes, we know other cruise lines did leave the port that night. Disney yeah. airs on the cautious they're cautious yes yes their priorities keeping everybody safe and that is what's most important all right so after you've signed the cruise contract you get your port arrival time your port arrival form you have to print this you have to bring it to port with you there's also an option to add it to your wallet if you have an iphone i'm not a samsung user so i don't know if there's something similar to a iPhone wallet um, to add it to, but just print it, take it with you. As you can see, it has um, all personal information is blocked out here, but it will have your yeah. reservation number, your stateroom number, the category, your castaway club level. Um, it will have your ship, your sailing, and your boarding group number. So this party is boarding group six and their port arrival time, I'm assuming for a six is probably 11, 15, 11, 30 or somewhere in there. Um, it's cut off from here. It would normally say it's somewhere over here on the top. Yes. Um, and it has your whole party. Now, because room keys are no longer issued at the port, there's barcodes on this and this is how they scan you onto the ship. So that's why it's important you bring it with you because this is literally how you scan onto the ship because your room keys are waiting for you on your little hooks on your room door when yeah. your room is ready. So this is actually how you board the ship, not only how you arrive at port, but actually how they board you. So do have this with you. Um, and there's that information people were looking for. Your boarding group number is there along with your muster drill um, station. Oh, yeah. Station. Yes. And is that, I know I've personally never paid any attention to it because I'm like, we figure it out once we get on board. You look at the back of the door. Um, yeah. But it seems like people are asking about that more and more. Yeah. I think it's because they want to pre know. Um, I, I honestly don't have a map of where all the muster stations are. Some, I mean, they're all over the place. Theater, anywhere on deck four is a yeah. muster station. Deck three or four could be one. So um, it's on the back of your door, and you're supposed to go to your stateroom during the muster drill and start from there because, you know, that's part of the muster drill. Because if they sound those horns, you're supposed to go to your room, grab your medications, warm clothes, and then go to your muster station. So yes, look yes. on the back of your door and then follow the crew members. They'll be telling you. And that is mandatory for everybody. I know that um, there were some changes with COVID and how things are done, but it is back. You do have to go. Your family all has to go. They do check you in. Don't be that family that's taking their sweet time up wherever exploring or in your stateroom because that will hold everybody else up. So just get there, get it done. It's quick. And then you get to enjoy the rest of your cruise. It's easy. You just stand there and, and listen. Super yeah, easy. Put on your thing, your yes. hello. Why your life I... jacket. Thank you. Sounds yeah. like <laughs> yes. this is how it works. <laughs> they tell you what they're going to do. Uh, you hear the ship whistle, cover your ears. It's kind of loud. Um, but it's important that you're there. We can't, they, they can't sell without it. Everybody has to scan their room key or one person per room key. Um, so that's the story. Um, yeah. Arrive to the port at your selected port arrival time. 
guests who arrive early will be asked to return at their scheduled arrival time. So don't do it. Just yeah. wait till your arrival time. Bring yeah. all the documents you submitted as part of the online check-in with you along to the port with this form, meaning the mm -hmm. port arrival form. Um, and then don't forget to download the Navigator app because that's how you'll communicate with your stateroom or friends you meet within that chat. Um, and it has all your navigator, your dining info. So you really want to use the app while you're on board. Yes. Don't pack the documents you submitted. Don't, uh, do don't pack this form. <laughs> don't no. do it. This is big. Don't pack beer or wine in your check luggage. Alcohol you're bringing on board must be carried with you. The alcohol policy is available at. Um, yeah. it, they will take it and they will confiscate it out of your bags. Um, yeah. So don't lose it. Just carry it on. And same goes for bottled water. You Correct. guys don't be the person that tries to put it in your suitcase. And then, you know, the, there's so much baggage getting transferred on the ship. If you hit a wrong corner and the bottle of water explodes and gets not only over your stuff, but over somebody else's, ask me how I know. When your suitcase arrives and it's soaking wet because somebody else didn't listen to the rules, that stinks. So don't be that family. Don't do it. Just carry it on with yeah. you. Yeah. I mean, they make the rules for a reason. And if you have to carry a case of water on the ship, you're going to have to carry that on board with you. So. Yeah. It could be in a roller board. It could be in your hands, but it cannot be in your pack luggage. Um, and don't bring prohibited items to the cruise terminal. Uh, they will take them from you. And the list is linked. Um, mm -hmm. And I also have a nice list of prohibited items. Um, but on your port arrival form, they put these reminders for you. Um, so... Yes, yes. So after that, after you've signed everything, then you see this pending, the oh, dooming yes. pending that people worry about. So why should I not stress about this? And when will it not say pending anymore? It might say pending up until the day you go to port. Yeah. As long as you have the port arrival form, you can arrive at port. There might have been a hold up. There might they might not have a clear picture of your document. They're going to check everything at the port anyway. Um, so don't worry about this pending approval. Um, mm -hmm. It mattered more during COVID than it does now. So if you saw it still pending during COVID, you needed to worry. Now you don't. Um, and it really can stay pending up until the day you go to the port. Yes. Do not stress Don't about worry. it. Just bring those documents. Like Laura's been saying, the documents you checked in with, if you did your birth certificate and ID, if you did passport, whatever it was, make sure you have that with you and they'll take care of it. Once you get to the port, that's how they used to do it pre 2020. So yep. it's not anything crazy. Um, it really and, isn't. Yeah. And if it gets declined, It'll tell you exactly what it's declined for. Like I said earlier, we got ours kicked back today because a passport picture got cut off. And I know sometimes it'll happen where you use the same passport picture for every cruise. But for some reason, this time it gets declined. Again, yeah, don't stress. It drive. depends on who's looking at it. Because I yeah. use the same security photo and my last cruise, they didn't like it. I'm like, it's the same right. one I use all the time. But it really I, depends on who's, who's processing it. Yes, because it is a, a manual process, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Somebody's yeah. looking. Yes. They're looking at the documents. Um, so, yeah, the, the key to making check-in easy is just having everything you need and yeah. just taking your time going. And it's all modules. Yeah. And once you're done, it'll say you're all checked in. You get an email. I think they even send you a copy now of your port arrival form. Yeah. Um, so it's yeah. that easy. Yes, I was going to say it It really isn't anything to stress about. I know I hopefully this helped. If this was helpful, please let us know. Because, you know, our goal is to make the planning and preparation process as smooth and easy and not stressful as possible. Um, and so hopefully we were able to help with that tonight. And, you know, if you are looking ahead at your Disney cruise, uh, if you have check-in coming up, I know there were a couple of people who messaged saying that they were checking in either tonight or at some point over the next week, which 
I'm excited for you, but also please take us with you. Yes, Just throwing please. that out there. <laughs> uh, but if you are going to be going on board, make sure you get a placeholder. And if you do not have a travel agent, as you can tell, Laura is so knowledgeable, so amazing. And she is here to help. Her planning services are free. So she is here to help be that resource in all of your Disney Cruise Line and travel needs. So thank you so much, Laura, for all your time tonight and being so, so knowledgeable and preparing all of this. Can't say thank you enough. Um, and then anything I need to know about mobility carts at the port? I'm picking one up at the port. Um, the scooter? All right, yeah, if you're talking about a scooter... Um, as long as you've pre-reserved one, they'll have it for you at the port and, um, it's better to charge it in your room. They're going to, that's the only thing you need to really know. Uh, the hallways are very thin. They don't really like it charged out there. Cause if there was an emergency, it, they can't yeah. get people around it easily. So, um, it really needs to be charged in your room and they'll tell you that when you board, but if you've reserved that scooter, it'll be there and they'll give you your instructions. Awesome. Yeah. So if you have any other questions, reach out to Laura. That is the link up on screen to her page on the DCL community site. And I'll make sure that this gets in the comments for everybody as well. But when you book that placeholder and now you can transfer that over to Laura, it is a super, super easy process. Like it'll take you less than five minutes. And um, if you are looking to book a Disney cruise, then you can reach out to Laura as well. She is phenomenal. And thank you again, Laura, for your time tonight. Um, and we'll see all y'all on board real soon. Bye, guys.